welcome back uh, last class we solved this particular problem which is shown in the slide and uh, we are going to continue in this lecture and going to solve yet another uh, question the question here is for the pumping setup shown in figure below this figure estimate the power required and the pressure at the suction side of the pump we see that the atmospheric head here is 10 meters and we have to assume both the major and the minor losses you see there are two pipes all right and these things are given ap the diameter of the pipe is given the length is given the friction factor for each of these pipes is given okay so how do we uh, solve this we have to estimate the power required by this pump and pressure required at this suction side of the pump all right so we will continue with eleven so static head is hundred and ten minus ninety five you see that is the static head if you remember the figure and that is fifteen meter velocity in the pipe one would be q by a one the pipe 1 was before the pump, pipe 2 was after the pump. Therefore, V1 Q is given as 20 liters per second. So, it is 0 0.02 and area is pi by 4 and the diameter is also given 0 0.15. So, it will come out to be 1.132 meters per second. Similarly, for the delivery pipe, that is velocity in the delivery pipe this is a suction pipe and v2 is the delivery pipe we can <coughs> a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 and therefore v1 can be written as d1 square by d2 square and therefore one point or you can do also q by a2 15 by 12 d 2 was 12 and therefore, it will come to be 1.769 meters per second in the delivery pipe. Okay. So, the major loss in pipe 1 will be f 1 l 1 by d 1 into v 1 square by 2 g f 1 is also given in pipe 1 length is 20 meters it is given diameter we already know 0.15 meter into v 1 we found out 1.132 whole square divided by 2 into 9.81 and this comes to be 0 0.174 meter ok there so there will also be uh, inlet loss and that is 0 0.5 into this is the minor loss v1 square by 2g so 0 0.5 into 1.132 whole square by 2 into 9.81 so 0 0.033 meter all right so this was the losses in pipe 1 we are going to see the hf2 so major loss in pipe 2 will be f2 l2 by d2 into v2 square by 2g so, F2 is also given 0 0.02, length is 300 meters that is given into D2 plus 0 0.12 into 1.769 whole square by 2 into 
that comes out to be 7.97 similarly there will be a loss at exit and at exit it is simply v2 square by 2g because k here is 1 so 1.769 is 0 0.160 so total head loss is going to be 0 0.174 plus 0 0.033 plus 7.975 plus 0 0.160 and this is going to be 8.342 meter now the head delivered by the pump HF will be static head first it has to overcome this static head plus the losses so it is going to be 15 plus 8.342 that is 23.342 Therefore, the power delivered by the pump is gamma QHF that is the total head. So, 9.79 into Q is 0 0.02 into 23.342 kilowatt. if you find 4.7 kilowatt ok so the first part we have got this as the answer alright now we also have to find the pressure at the suction side of the pump so for that we are going to use the Bernoulli's equation and also taking the head loss into account Alright, so part B will be solved by energy equation between reservoir A and pump B. So, let P S be the pressure at suction side of the pump then we put the Bernoulli's equation 95 plus 0 plus 0 will be equal to the pump is at z is equal to 100 and if the pressure P s by gamma plus V 1 square by 2 g plus losses in suction pipe. right so this will be 100 plus p s by gamma and v 1 square by 2 g is going to be 0 0.065 because v 1 we have already found out plus losses in the suction pipe is 0 0.174 major and the minor losses 0 033 this is major loss this is minor loss ok so p s by gamma can be found out to be minus 5.272 meter ok this is gauge alright so the 
real pressure is going to be 10 minus 5.272 because we have already been told the absolute is 10. So, it is going to be or equal to 4.728 multiplied by 9.79 to get it into form of kilo Pascal. So, 46.29 kilo Pascal absolute all right this is the value that we have got. So, both the answers we got now we proceed next and we solve one more problem a very simple problem we say a pipe enlarges suddenly from D 1 is equal to 240 millimeters to D 2 is equal to 480 millimeters and the H G L rises by 10 centimeters calculate the flow in the pipe all right. So, this is V 1 and this is V 2 all right. So, this is 1 and this is 2. So, we are going to solve this as well. So, we can write Bernoulli's equation P 1 by rho g plus V 1 square by 2 g plus Z 1 will be equal to P 2 by rho g plus V 2 square by 2 g plus Z 2 plus whatever the head loss is. Okay. So, we take V 2 on this side. So, we can write V 1 square by 2 g minus V 2 square by 2 g minus H L is equal to P 2 by rho g plus Z 2 minus P 1 by rho g plus Z 1. Okay. and all right. So, to find the relation between A 1 and V 1 sorry V 1 and V 2 we can say V 1 A 1 is equal to V 2 A 2 all right which will give us. So, areas are double. So, we are going to get V 1 is equal to 4 V 2 all right. And if we put this in these equations here and we also know that this is 0 0.1 that is what it says that the HGL rises by 0.1. Therefore, this will become 16 V 2 square this equation here by 2 G minus V 2 square by 2 G is equal to 4 V 2 minus V 1 square by 2 G sorry this is minus because there was an entrance you know head loss is what is this H L? H L is V 1 minus V 2 whole square by 2 G if you remember the minor loss formula is equal to 0 0.1 and if you solve this equation you are going to get 6 V 2 square by 2 G is equal to 0 0.1 which will give V 2 as 0 0.57 meters per second implies Q is A 2 V 2 which will give 0 0.103 meter cube per second. Very simple formula 
the application we have seen using Bernoulli's equation, equation of continuity and because there is going to be a minor loss which is equivalent to V1 minus V2 whole square by 2G as we have said we, had, we have read in the minor loss uh, <coughs> the, the, the topic on the minor losses in the pipes. Okay. All right, so we proceed forward from this question. So we talk about pipe networks. Pipe could be connected in series or parallel, right? Or combination of both. So this is a serial connection. So in the serial connection, the important properties are that discharge Q1 in this section, this section 2, this section 3 will be the same. However, the total head loss will be the sum of the head losses of individual sections. Whereas in case of parallel connection, the discharge will be the sum of all three. So if there is a discharge Q, Q1, Q2, Q3 but the head losses will be the same in each of the lines. So, this is the thumb rule important thing to remember when you are dealing with pipe networks. All right. So, a water distribution system consists of complex interconnected pipes service reservoir and or pumps which deliver water from the treatment plant to the consumer. The water demand is highly variable whereas supply is normally constant. Thus the distribution system must include storage elements and must be capable of flexible operation. So pipe network analysis involves the determination of pipe flow rates and pressure heads at the outflow points of the network. The flow rate and pressure heads must satisfy the continuity and the energy equation. That is very true as I told you in the last slide. The earliest systematic method of network analysis is called the Hardy cross method and is known as the head balanced or the closed loop method. So, pipe network is a topic where we are going to study this famous method of Hardy cross method. It is known as the head balance or the closed loop method. It is a very, very systematic way which can be used for solving the pipe networks. So, this particular method of Hardy cross is applicable to a system in which pipes form closed loops. Okay. So, the outflow from the system are generally assumed to occur at the junction nodes. For a given pipe system with known outflows, the Hardy cross method is an iterative procedure based on initially iterated flows in pipe. So, Hardy cross method has a set rule and uh, procedure, but this for the solution it is an iterative procedure. So, what are the important points to remember in solving pipe networks using Hardy cross method? that at each junction the flow must satisfy the continuity criterion. What are this continuity criterion? The continuity criterion is that the algebraic sum of the flow rates in the pipe meeting at a junction together with any external flows is 0. Suppose this is a node right, there is Q1, Q2, Q3. So, Q1 is equal to Q2 plus Q3. So, the net outflow at any junction should be 0 is the continuity criterion. Secondly, the algebraic sum of head losses round each loop must be 0. So, sigma of head losses in one loop like this should be 0. All right. So, with a simple continuity equation, uh, we are going to solve one class question. The question is a pipe 6 centimeter in diameter okay, here and 1000 meter long and with lambda is equal to 0 0.018 is connected in parallel. So, this is pipe 1 and this is pipe 2 between two points M and N. All right. 
and this other pipe is 8 centimeter in diameter and 800 meter long. So, this was 1000 meter long, this is 800 and the diameter was 6 and diameter was 8 and this has a lambda of 0 0.020. A total discharge of 20 liters per second enters. So, from here something 20 liters per second enters the parallel pipe through division at A and rejoins at B. So, it here and it rejoins here. Estimate the discharge in each of the pipe very simple application of the concepts we have learned till now. So, we are going to solve this question. All right. So, so there was pipe right. So, Q will be equal to Q 1 plus Q 2. So, total discharge is 0 0.02 and we know the areas pi by 4 into 0 0.06. Let us say velocity is V 1 here and in the pipe 2 it is V 2 0.08 V 2. Alright. So, this is the equation for the, the, the continuity equation for discharge. Alright, so for pipes in parallel, we also know that the head losses should be equal in each both pipes. Hmm? So, this actually can be written as V1 plus 1.778 V2 is equal to 7 point. If you solve this, it will come this. This is the one equation that we have got from here. And now, HF1 is equal to HF2, which means lambda 1 L1 V1 square. This is the major loss in pipe 1 is equal to lambda 2 into L 2 into V 2 square by 2 G D 2. Alright. So, let us substitute the value lambda 1 was 0 0.018, length was 1000 first pipe into V 1 square by 2. So, 2 G D 1 is come out to be 0 0.06 this will be 0 0.020 into 800 this comes to be 0 0.08 into v2 square so taking it here we will get v1 is equal to 0 0.8165 so we have two equations in v1 and v2 <coughs> hmm. so 1 and 2 solving for V 2 by substituting V by substituting 2 in 1. We will get V 2 as 2.73 meters per second. So, Q 2 will be a 2 V 2. So, pi by 4 0 0.08 whole square into 2.73. So, Q 2 will come to be 0 0.0137 meter cube per second. Now, if we know V 2, we can get V 1 from here. V 1 will be 0 0.8165 V2. This will give us V1 as 2.23 meters per second and therefore, Q1 will be A1 V1 will give us 0 0.0063 meter cube per second. Alright. So, this is the answer, but one important step is it is better if we recheck the answer. 
रीचेक द आंसर बाय q1 वन प्लस क्यू टू इफ इट इज इक्वल टू क्यू आर नॉट सो जीरो पॉइंट जीरो जीरो सिक्स थ्री क्यू वन प्लस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन थ्री सेवन इट इज कमिंग आउट टू बी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू जीरो विच इज इक्वल टू क्यू सो आवर आंसर इज ओके so this was one other question the now the one more question is there is a horizontal pipeline which is 50 meters long and is connected to reservoir at one end and discharges freely into the atmosphere at the other end so for the first 25 meters i have shown this diagram here okay all right so 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 the first 25 meters length from the reservoir the pipe has a diameter of 15 cm and it has a square entrance at the reservoir the remaining 25 meter length of the pipe has a diameter of 30 cm so this is the long long pipe okay and this is pipe 1 and i mean the the um, things that we were talking about diameter is different here diameter is different here so junction of the two pipe is at form of a sudden expansion so we have been told sudden expansion that means there is going to be a energy loss minor loss it's also told that there is going to be a there is a great wall in a 15 cm pipe so there is going to be another another minor loss here okay so if the height of the water surface in the tank is 10 meter above the center line of the velocity estimate the discharge in the pipe by considering the darcy wish back friction factor of 0.02 for both the pipes so this is given because there will be also major losses between these two sections major losses okay so we have to this is a wholesome a complete question uh, that involves both the major and the minor losses all right so we are going to uh, actually uh, i think this is a nice point to stop in the next class we are going to solve this particular question in detail because then it will be fresh in your mind uh, and then we will proceed to our last topic that is hardy cross method so thank you so much for listening i'll see you in the next lecture